Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. Today's video is all about On One Photo Raw and three things you don't know about Photo Raw, but you should. Now, if you're like a super powered user, well, maybe you know one or two of these things, but these are like lesser known things that I think are overlooked in the program that are really useful and easy to use to help make your photos look even better. Before I show you the three things, if you're interested in getting Photo Raw, I can save you a little bit of money. I've got an offer code SDP20. It's in the show notes, drop that in, new license, it'll save you 20% off the list price. And with that, let's take a look at these three things. The first one is in the develop tab in the edit module, and it's the midtone slider. I think the midtone slider gets overlooked quite a bit, and it's very, very useful when you have a situation that you need to brighten or darken midtones, but not really touch the highlights and shadows. And in this scene, I've already brought the exposure up. I've reined in the highlights in the sky a little bit. And you know, next I would be starting to work with shadows. And as I bring the shadows up, it's getting a little bit flat, especially in the area of this lifeguard tower, the under part of it. I'm losing some of the deep rich shadows and even here in the, uh, the rocks and the surf. So a little bit of shadow is okay increasing, but mid-tones lets me pull this up without really dropping the shadows too much at all underneath that lifeguard tower. And I'm keeping some of the richness here turn off that mid-tones again. If I try to do it with shadows, you notice how it gets kind of like a little more grayish, just you know, a little bit washed out because I'm opening up those shadows too much. With mid-tones, I'm keeping that richness, especially underneath this lifeguard tower and those very deep shadows. So tip number one, the mid-tone slider in the develop module. Number two is renaming the filters that you apply in the effects module. Let me show you what I have here. I've got two filters I've added. I've added a curves and a dynamic contrast. Let's turn these off. This is the photo we have. I add curves and you can see I'm adjusting the tone and color. I'm making this a little airier, a little more of a pastel feel. And then with dynamic contrast, I'm adding some crispness and punch into the rocks and a bit into the clouds as well. Well, I can double click on any of these and I can instead of say curves, I can just say, you know, like color grading. And for dynamic contrast, I can say cliff and sky. And now I know exactly what these areas are changing. These filters are affecting certain elements in my photo. And this is especially useful if you start adding more than one of the same type of filter. For example, I could add a second curves filter and do a little classic S curve, or it's just adding a little bit extra contrast. Well, I can just call this, you know, global S curve or something like that. And I know what I have there. And I don't have three, four, five curves adjustments. I have them named specifically for what they're doing. I use this a lot with color adjustments. If I'm working with a scene where I have reds, greens, uh, you know, different tones of blues, whatever it might be, and name them as, you know, tree line or water or so forth to, you know, tell me what I'm looking at when I go back and look at these settings later. The same holds true in local adjustments. Here I opened up the foreground so I can say open foreground to add a little more exposure there before and after. Just giving it this name lets me know what it is. And oh, by the way, that mid-tone slider that we talked about in tip number one, that's available in local adjustments too. So that mid-tone slider kind of you know, pops its head up every now and again, and it's a good one to reach for. The third thing that you should know about Photo Raw is with the perfect brush and specifically the gear menu to control how sensitive the perfect brush is. If you don't know what the perfect brush is, it's the edge detection built into the masking tool. So when we're applying effects or we're working on masks, we can turn on edge detection to get a really nice crisp mask. And that's turned on right here. But next to it is this gear menu. And I wanna hover over this color threshold for just a moment. You can see it controls the sensitivity to color. The way the perfect brush works is it looks at the color tones you're hovering over and then makes sure to match things as you're brushing in or out. So it narrows it to the specific color tones you're working with. And as objects change, the color tones change. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna push this very, very far up, which means don't be very sensitive at all. And I'll press the O key to turn on my mask overlay. And I want to paint in a little bit of uh, dehazing into this background. So notice as I start painting here, I'm keeping the brush very, very uh, centered on the land, yet I'm creeping up into the sky. Well, we can see that the tones are pretty similar. And when I tell the brush, be very generous with matching tones like I did up here in this gear menu, 
it's going to do a less precise job. If I lower this down, the default is somewhere in the neighborhood of four or five. I'll put it at three, that's fine. We'll turn our mask brush back on and I'll reset the mask. Now as I brush through, I get a nice crisp edge. And so if you are noticing and you're working with an area that has very similar color tones, go into the gear menu, lower that color threshold, and you'll get a much more precise edge. Well, that's three different things about Photo Raw that I think are overlooked. They're uh, lesser known features of the software, yet still very, very useful to know about. And that will do it for this video. If you've got a favorite on one tip, why don't you leave it in the comments below? Or if you've got other questions about photography, hit me up in the comments. Or if you want to keep it private, you can reach out to me through my website. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport, and happy shooting.